most played hero by far. And I feel like after last game, he kind of got schooled in the mid lane. And Ricky is one of those heroes that is known for doing well versus Invoker in the mid lane. So no. we'll see what Moo has to bring. The build that I saw that was most common was, guess it or not, Meteor Hammer. Hammer, <laughs> yeah. Hammer build into Diffuso Blade. I don't know what the offlane Ricky is going to build, but I don't think the build should be much different All from right. what we saw there. So, so let's contemplate on that. So you put yourself in the mindset of Moo. He always likes like particular item builds, yeah. and he usually repeats those from game to game. What is he most likely to build because it is Moo? I mean, definitely Meteor Hammer. Okay. He, he wants he wants to farm, right? He wants an item that can help him farm and cover for the weaknesses of R Ricky. Ricky's big weaknesses are the fact that this hero does not farm very quickly. You cannot push very quickly either. And you're typically not a core yep. in most cases. <laughs> in a At way, least yeah. for a, a long time, this hero hasn't been core just because of how poorly it does scale and what the issues it does have with farming. But Meteor Hammer does solve those like issues for him. So I do imagine yep. that is the route he is going to go for. Also, one of the downsides that I've seen Ricky in the last few years is his farming patterns, if there are any farming patterns, are very easy to read. He's very likely to be in one of the all, one of the three lanes because that's where he gets to hit the creeps and actually right. do damage to them. If you jungle with this hero, it takes forever. So yeah. you're like, they're just not dying and you're taking a lot of damage. At least his new HP regen does kind of cover for that. So I guess the Meteor Hammer is the way to go. But I'll however, imagine. Yeah. I mean, the only other build I saw was um, for some time, like that Aghanim's Battle Fury build was the thing. It was very obnoxious, got nerfed into the ground, but yep. without a Battle Fury, this hero just innately cannot farm very much, but they might go in Bloody Knight on top lane, just get him He's, really low. He is rather rather weak there in the top lane, and that also does hurt Russell a little bit, who uh, we have seen take over the carry role from, uh, from for a couple games. Sunlight, who didn't have great success at the start uh, for the side of Dog Champ. Pretty, bit rough performances, you could put that way, but still was able to bring the W on the board, at least in, in one series. The second one was more about Russell just bringing out the Naga and experimenting kind of what kind of hero pool does he bring into play. And that was a theme we had for Dog Champ as a whole, that they could be difficult to read because you have two players playing technically the same role and they switch it around a little bit. You know, Russell and Sunlight. You don't really know who's the offlaner and who's the carry from time to time. I think so far Russell has looked a lot better on the carry position than Sunlight. All the games that they have won have been on the back of Russell playing carry. And that's kind of where their drafts make the most sense too, because Sunlight doesn't like to play many of the carry heroes mm -hmm. that we consider carry heroes. Not just, I don't consider Timbersaw going in the safe lane being a carry, right, in that regard. So Sunlight, he's uh, on a hero we've seen him do well with in the DPC, playing an offlaner. And then Russell, he's the one that really just like steps up to the plate. He did play the Naga. Most of his heroes that he is playing as carry, he's like silver on them from yep. Dota Plus Y, just means he doesn't play them that often, but he is just a very skilled player and he's filling the slot that he needs to fill for the team. What I like about here in this bot lane is exactly Flea bringing the creep wave right in front of the tower, sadly inside tower range. So uh, that wave is going to start pushing once again. At least Sunlight, he's been able to get that level two, close to level three. And does he start to max out his uh, grave chill? Do we see a point uh, brought up in the graveskeeper? The gravekeeper's cloak. So uh, there's they, they actually have a lot of quick hitters and a lot of damage on the side of Nouns to just break through those charges. Yeah, I mean, at the same time, the reason why a lot of people do like this Monkey King versus Visage matchup is the fact that you can use your Mischief as you're going to get tossed back and didn't get it off at the time, but... Oh, he is slowed up for the time being. Sadly, Flea doesn't get too many punches in, so Sunlight's not going to get Soul Assumption snacks either, and they're looking to turn around. Okay. Bit of trading hits onto Flea. Yeah, I was saying, if you time it correctly, you can use Mischief to dodge the Soul Assumption. Yeah. And that's uh, very helpful for you if you're a Monkey King in this matchup, but you got to time it correctly. Yeah, and also by the... I think I think you can get three to four Soul Assumptions at the cost of one Mischief. So you yeah. still get two connections, and that is if it's 100% brawling the whole time. So if you time your Mischief, you either make the decision, are we committing with this? Or do we chill for a bit because I need the cooldown back up to be able to sustain myself in the lane? Right. And this game, Gunner, he's taking revenge after that last game here, having a much more dominant mid lane here. 24 and 7 to the 16 and 6 of RCY here. So having a much better game as they're going to check for the runes here and he finds Bloody Nine. Mm -hmm. Oh, 
well. So the glimpse comes out. Two more seconds for the rune to spawn. And yep. it's uh, Bloody Nine going to take it away from Gunner. Will he die for it, though, is the question. Trying to move around and juke around, but... Yeah, he's dead. <laughs> this, this ledge is just too fast. Yeah. I don't know where you're going to be going. Oh, the neutrals the, are the coming! Deny? Oh, no! <laughs> Not like this! <laughs> oh, the lightning was a little bit too much. Oh, the it's thunder. It's because... If Bloody Nine reads this, there's a ward up there's there. There's a ward, yeah, yeah, exactly. So he's like, oh, yeah. that hit the, that hit that. I mean, he might get a D ward out of this too. Perhaps why he gave him the tip as well. But interesting to see for Moo here. Uh, they do have silence. So he misses it just narrowly on yeah. Moo here. And they're also fighting out in the in the bot lane too, trying to contest this uh, this Monkey King at the same yeah. time. So I was confused what Moo was buying. So because he bought the Orb of Corrosion right away, but seeing that there's a a ring of health. Makes me believe he might go for that Meteor Hammer build here, as we will get a glimpse into nothing here. Into but nothing. Just a rest. I wish Moo wasn't that type of player that just keeps you guessing. Like, he won't put the whole item on his quick buy. He just puts, like, one piece of that item. So we don't really know for sure what he's going to do with this ring, but I imagine it has to be the Meteor Hammer. I'm just surprised he didn't rush it right away. Mm. One for the Orb of Corrosion All right, first. all right, hear me out. This is the stupidest build you're probably going to go for, but right. he could build Vanguard into Radiance, while Yamsen, <laughs> finding out with Flea, they he did use their nuke, and he oh, missed he has one HP, basically. Sunlight, he needs to land it, but he's waiting for the Mischief, and he won't get it! Sunlight gets first blood. He didn't use Mischief on either of those, or even attempt it there. If he would have dodged one of those with Mischief... That would have been really good for Nounce. But at the end of the day, he didn't. He died. And that's first yeah. blood going the way of sunlight. Much needed as his CS wasn't... It's not terrible, actually. So he's actually having an amazing laning stage. That is what you need from your Visage. If you get shut down early, the hero still needs a lot of farm, a lot of time, a lot of space until he starts to create that. Six minute room. Join in with the team. Gunner. Haste for Gunner. Yep. Let's see what he do, does with it. He is still level five. Needs at least one extra creep wave to get six and make a rotation. And Lelis, well, this was your chance for the possible T, uh, D ward, but Joink's a bounty. Yep, Glimpse Actually, right don't back. know about the ward? Yeah, and they don't. It's fine. It's something that, like, if you were paying really close attention to Bloody Nine, you would have noticed, but I think he was just relieved that he denied that kill as top lane. Yeah, but now that level six as well. RCY and Russell both in trouble at the same uh, time. RCY about to drop. Is it going to be enough, though? Gunner almost dead, but the Fort Spirit not going to do enough damage to take him out. Russell gets to live, but they do find the kill. The yeah. first kill for Nouns. The first official kill for, for Gunner. Yeah, a much-needed kill there. He unfortunately like was a level behind at the time, but with that rotation from Husky here, securing that kill was absolutely huge as we're mm. having... The reverse of last game. Nouns winning all three lanes now in the net worth department here. Well, Dog Champ are in a position where I feel like they have the superior late game. There's definitely some factors involved with uh, how their draft will function. Right now, you have Invoker who is going for that Exor build. You have Faces Void. That is really, really good late game potential with the Chronosphere. But we'll see if what Husky can make a couple saves with the IO yeah. into the Chronosphere. That'll be huge. And we've seen Husky being a very good IO player and definitely doing that. So uh, Nouns has something to fall back on if Russell is unable to clean them out with that Chronosphere. But certainly, they have combos in and out of it. Meanwhile, on the bottom lane, Yamsen is about to fall. Mischief a bit too late this time, but the turnaround with the stun, they're going to able to take down Sunlight first and flee. He's going to have to flee. Yeah, he's just too strong right now. He does have the raindrops available which helps immensely against this Visage. Eats up a lot of that nuke damage, and that's the only way he can proc the raindrop charge. And Tiny doesn't have the greatest ways either to block the raindrop yeah. charge earlier That actually on. prevented him from dying there. Yeah. He would, have, he would have died to the soul assumption. Moo. One versus two in the top lane, fighting against Bloody Nine and Russell, sitting in the smoke cloud and... Uh, Chrono will okay. be used, but he's going to come out from the Tricks Sunstrike. of the Trade. And on the Sunstrike, Moo, 50 HP. Russell, does he have the time dilation slow? He can't see him anymore. Didn't see that coming. Didn't see that out coming. Out of sight. Yeah, they had that one sentry there, and Moo kind of outplayed him there. Like, the time he had during the Chrono while being invulnerable inside the Tricks of the Trade there definitely saved his life there. Yeah, close call. Now Sunlight also forced away from that bottom lane. Yamsen and Husky, they're... Uh, Upping the tempo. Level 6 on Visage here, though. 
they do want to make something happen here. So if there is a time that Sunlight can start making things happen on the map, it is now as you do get a huge power spike on this hero when you hit level six. Just needs to be very, very cautious about getting hit by the, the primal spring. The slow is going to be nasty. You're going to take oh, a lot of extra hits. Fleet just TP'd in front of their face. Right? Mm. Well, they see that one. Yeah, they definitely saw that one. So, <laughs> jigs up on there. As they do have a ward watching them too here. And I think they're just going to farm up if you're Yamsun Husky. You're waiting for Last Track Gunner to get his Bloodstone online. Then you're going to try and find that timing again. The real timing for Moo is going to be... What is this Meteor Hammer timing going to mean for them? Are they going to do something with it? It's going to be a little bit of a late timing because he did opt to go for the Orb of Corrosion. But his farm is still good. He is winning against this uh, Faceless Void in the laning stage now. And that's one of the strengths of Ricky right now as a whole is its early game is very strong. You have very high stats. The problem is your stat game. Yeah, this has terrible stacking. Well, this time they make sure that Yamsen yeah. falls. Uh, an important kill onto the Monkey King carry and uh, Eclipse is available. Just doesn't have vision. vision on Husky. He picks up the Invis rune and drops down the sentry, hoping that he might still be around the area. But that's that's a no, sir. Two to two. Ten minutes in. Faces Void, dragging behind in farm. Last place, but only Monkey King. A couple hundred gold ahead. Not too big of a difference. But I would rather have, like, a Faces Void in recovery mode as opposed to last game, having, like, a Timber Soul that's really far ahead and having no chance in the late game yeah, here. Yeah. Especially when they do have, like, momentum here. L Sunlight is going to take down that Tier 1 in the bottom lane after he got level 6. They killed the Monkey King. Yeah. We've seen before. I talk about it a lot. Monkey King isn't really a hero that enjoys, oh. like, having a bad laning stage. I was waiting for that level 6 to come in. Oh, Sunstrike. Ooh. Oh, he got oh. the Thunder Hide there. Oh, yeah, he got a Worth last hit in between. <laughs> he's got the money. He was hoping for a kill. But at the same time, they were just trying to get level 6 on the IO so they could relocate. Yep. But uh, as they finally do have it used, get themselves the regeneration back to Chrono? farming. Let's see if Mu can actually land a blind Meteor Hammer onto 2. Close call. Hits the tower. That was very bizarre. They're afraid. Of, what were they afraid of? Another dodge. I mean, he just used it, but like Russell did not want to chase after him, thinking that maybe perhaps relocate was up, but it was not because it was recently used. So, mm. unsure of that, but he is keeping mid as action will happen there. Yep, and we've got everybody surrounding the last track, knowing that there's possibly a relocate, but they don't know it's actually on cool. That flea cancels out the tether for a moment. They finished off Gunner, and now Moo joining in the fight as well. The Chrono, it's on three. It's a big one. They're going to take down Husky. Can they get more? The damage is still a bit lacking. They need to close these kills out before they lose the message as well. And they will take down Lelis. And now RCY, going to get hit by Yamsen. He's coming up the rotation as well, but the birds ain't going to be able to land the stuns. And now they finally do. Russell with a reposition, but Sunlight still in the middle of the fray, still in the battle. Can they kill off Yamsen? They've lost Sunlight. They will take down Yamsen. And Moo landing the Meteor Hammer on top of Russell, but Russell has to jump up. Available. The Forge Spirit's dropping this Ricky's armor, but he also can't quite kill off this Faceless Void. So, a bit of a skirmish there in the mid lane. Yeah, that was a great Chronosphere. They didn't have a lot of damage for it, which they ended up killing the IO out of it. Four but the big three. thing is that they got the Lesher I killed. That was huge. Gunner was getting out of control, but I think if you are nouns now, you take the offensive, knowing Chrono is down, and try to take this mid tower. Yeah, straight up push. Uh, Gunner leading the front sunlight. He's respawned and he's rejoining the fight. They want to fight they though. Meteor hammer in the trees. It can connects onto RCY. He throws a two meter tornado connecting on nothing and sunlight's going to get stunned up at the tower. Goes down and they also got a small cloud connecting onto four heroes. Good isolation, but the static storm is there. Can they turn this one around? They've got the gunner in middle. Gunner down. They will take down the ledge, but Moo's still trying to fight in the backline sort of take this disruptor, but he's just juking around in the trees. The tricks of the trade and then we'll get a connection. Lelis will have the vision for the kill and Moo jumps out. He's still very low in HP. They've taken the disruptor, but can they find more? Husky, he's got to relocate won't be able to get to use it here and he is down now dog champ they don't even get the mid tower it's denied by Lilas. yeah uh, can they go here yeah it looks like they're trying potentially just kill him here okay a lot of stick charges russell should be okay yeah, not enough damage i was wondering why husky went back in there but it turned out that him going in did save moose life and that's definitely a trade you want to be making transferring your pos five's life for your offlaner and Moo gets to live. Yep. I thought he might for sure die there. And we're getting close to that timing now, T-Panda. We almost got the shard online we for are. the Ricky. And that's when, it sure, it was nerfed. 
but you're more durable now as an offlane Ricky as a POS 5. So even if they do see you, you can potentially survive, yep. get the dart off, and also get the meteor hammer off. And we do see in his build, he's also maxing smoke screen, which will maybe at level 10, he get another point into the talent there, but mm -hmm. maybe he'll just max out smoke screen first. But either way, Ricky is going to get more powerful once the shard is online. Exactly. Like you've got the you've got the corrosion just for the debuff and also the extra stats that you gain from it, slowing down your opponents and uh, tricks of the trade. Just you can just keep it up level one. You don't need to put any extra points in it. You're not really a right clicking Ricky. You just want to make sure the debuffs connect. You've got the dart into the hammer stun and allows you to kill pretty much anyone. Yep. Thirty more seconds and then we're gonna have that. And I think nouns are definitely chilling until then. I'm sure Moo is like, just yes. wait, go farm for 30 seconds, get my hammer, then potentially they can go for a smoke play. And you do have to keep in mind, this is an IO strategy too. So if you do want to split push against this Ricky with the shard, it's going to be very scary. So I think Dog Champ are going to need to set up positionings. They need to ward accordingly. So when they see this Ricky, they can kill it without... Yeah you know, being too deep in the enemy jungle by yourself and getting caught out, because they do have that relocate combo that complements this uh, shard That's true. really nice. You need to have, like, very good vision play. You always yes. need to know what is Nouns up to to have that comfort of even attempting a bit of a split push. And Lelis just comes in with a stolen time walk into the telekinesis to get Flea and Flea down. Easy kill on the Tiny, and that pushes back his blink timer by a bit. Yeah, he's trying to get that blink money farming in the mid lane and got punished for it. I really do like that move from Nouns there. And Yamsun all the while just farming on the top lane here, going for the Echo Saber into the Desolator, it looks yeah. like, is his choice. Realizing he doesn't have to build this Battle Fury and be the hard carry of the game. They're going to rely on the IO Lestrak and what it does best, scaling throughout the game. He just wants to be part of the fights and be strong as possible as oh, they can. sitting for Sunlight this uh, time, and this is exactly available. what we talked about. Dart, relocate. Yamsen also wants to join in on the party. Easy core kill. You can't do this after 15 you minutes can't. for Soriki. You really can. I Game is like, unplayable. <laughs> I would like them to walk to the bottom lane, drop some wards, have some vision, and have a support at most tank that death. Oh, he stole Glimpse. Bloody and I could die. They've got a rotation coming into mid. They've got Moo. They've yeah. got Husky. He has to Static Storm to defend himself. And they lose their ward in the process here. They so lose the ward. Feeling very familiar, having some deja vu from game number one here. Nouns just straight up outplaying them in the mid game. Yeah, it's like it's like it's kind of like an idea of you know you have this big battle that you have to take part to, but all your warriors are somewhat wounded. Looks like it. As like they cannot find a moment to what to do on this map, and they're back to the same plan. We see Russell going bottom, RCY pushing top. They have to realize at some point if they want to keep ratting, that they will get picked off if Mu happens to be in the right positioning. Right now he's not, and he does have wards on him, which is very interesting because Ricky is a great warder. Oh so yeah. So giving your pos three the wards to get wards out for you is definitely nice. Yeah, that's also pretty annoying to play against because your supports are not only fearful of the situation, but they also know that we're probably somewhat under vision, either of a ward or a Riki. So we're yeah. either dead or we're dead. You know, there's like <laughs> you just have this constant, uh, constant fear of the unknown. Yeah, but I do like to take Roche. I'm fine with giving Roche up in this situation for Dog Champ, as long as they get some map control and they play together more, because. They absolutely have to. They can't end up in a situation where they're just split pushing the map and dying to this shard plus relocate combination that Nouns has going yeah. for them. But you also have to deal with Gunner now, who's very close to having the Kai and Sange complete with an Aegis. I think you dodge this man for yeah. the next five minutes at the best you can. You did get two big items here. We've got the Blink on the Tiny and RCY right, also with the BKB. Glimpse. So these two might be able to turn the tide. Husky already loading up the relocate and not enough. He's actually going to stun him oh, with the stunned. birds. The birds are interrupting in the back and Aegis gone into the Chrono. Meatball coming in from the, sp from the skies. Can they take down Gunner? They've got a stolen Chrono RCY is controlled on the side. He can't get anything out, but Gunner, he's gonna fall. And Yamsen now has to take part in this fight as well. With his ult, the RCY trying to make a walk out of it. Moo still in the middle. Gonna take down Russell. That's your carry down for your mid -lish. And they can still continue going. Sunlight punishing Moo a little bit here. Yamsen 
He's going to stick around in the area, Husky. He's going to try to attempt a bit of a save regen here on the Moo, but Moo able to walk out, and now Bloody Nine going to get controlled and focus down. RCY, he's got no mana. He's going to get stunned up by two. Janssen is going to look to take the kills for himself in Sunlight. He's still trying to get the final act, but they will lose RCY, and Flea jumping in will take down Moo, and there's going to be another trade-off. Three versus two, though, and Flea, he's got no mana for this fight. It's pretty much over at this point, and Nouns, they look to take another one with the stolen Glimpse. glimpse from Lelis and Husky to close out the kill. I mean, that looks really good at first for Dog Champ. I was talking about how they probably can't fight into the Lesh, but they got a great glimpse there, bursted him right away, even through the Bloodstone usage, and they canceled the relocate as well with the birds, which is absolutely amazing there, but it turns out like they used so many resources to do that that they couldn't continue to take the fights. However, that is promising, though. If they can keep doing that and Sunlight can keep reliably using his birds to stop the relocate from the IO, their damage doesn't run out this game. Yeah. Like, they'll be able to... That There's in this area, they cover that entire fight, making it so good for Dogsham, especially the one located there in the mid area, seeing where the IO is probably going to be showing up from. Yeah, if I were Nouns, I would try not to fight in that area right now because yeah, <laughs> they have so much vision in that small cluster. But everywhere else on the map, they don't have a single ward. Oh boy, Meteor Hammer relocate on top of a face of Spoid. Flea tries to buy some time. The Lelis, he still the Avalanche. They do have a pretty nice ulti onto three, but however, Gunner, they're just going to turn around with the Avalanche stun onto Sunlight and the follow-up too. And they will have to sack a second core. And there's the Dart connecting onto the Disruptor. RCY, he's like, guys, <laughs> things, are, things are not looking pretty hot right now. Get out of there. Triple kill for Gunner. Simple sequence of three kills, one after the other. Yeah, I, I think you just let the Void die there, right? And you don't try to go in for those kills. They thought maybe you can turn it, but at the end of the day, this Void, he's going to have severe issues until he finishes his BKB, and he's not anywhere close to it. He cannot get initiated on. He's a prime target for the Sleeping Dart into Silence combo, and if they kill the Void a couple more times like this, I'm afraid that this game is going to be a little too hard for Russell to come back from, and... He has to let his team go first, but I don't know who goes first. I guess it has to be Sunlight at this point on the Visage here. And he's not going to be happy about that. Yeah, for now, like, we saw how fast that the Slashrack did burst through his Gravekeeper Cloak, which did kill his birds ultimately as well, so... It's, it's not easy, for sure. They need to buy a bit more time here on Dog, and they need to get a fight like they did before. And with Gunner running in the front, dropping in the Chronosphere, and then somehow canceling the relocate from the back and that Husky's trying to accomplish. On the bright side, they're not making this game look any easier uh, for Nouns. They're not just running over like these game twos from time to time. It feels like you've lost your morale. You're not able to fight back against your opponents. Oh, our draft has too many flaws and weaknesses and our execution ain't on point. But Dogchamp's actually making this a pretty good game. They just need to hold on to it. And Gunner, again, initiated on. They've got a relocate coming in with the save from yep. Husky. Pulls him back to safety. Flea's going to be falling in just a matter of seconds. And they will get him. But Yamsen, he's also being initiated on here. He's very tanky, though. Void has Chrono. He's looking for an opportunity to use it, but he backs away. Sunlight slow. Bloody Nine is going to be sacked in the front. And they still got the jump, the dart, the dart, and the silence on top of the faceless void. He still doesn't have that BKB, so he's trying to make it out. But Moo, he's got another dart in six seconds. Sunlight also being chased by Gunner and Husky. They're giving all the vision that they need, but they do have the tree line to protect themselves. And of course, the nerf on the dart, it's no longer that long of a cast range. Yeah. Can't get close enough. We talked about needing to stop Husky there, like MVP of that fight right there, getting the relocate clutchly on Gunner the last second, saving him from the Static Storm and all the damage that was coming afterwards there. If you can't stop these relocates, it's going to be difficult. They've got Mu, but also Sunlight's still asleep. And here comes the Chrono and the Stolen Chrono as well. Who's he going to land it on? He looked for RCY last time. Lelis, they will be able to clear out Flea. They see Sunlight on RCY right on top of themselves. But Gunner still tanking hits. Husky giving out the regeneration. He's a very tanky boy. He's still got that Bloodstone as well. Going to turn around for the fight. Gunner taking the man mode. Going straight up on towards Sunlight. And there's the Stolen Chrono. It's got RCY. They've got themselves Sunlight inside the sun as well. And RCY nowhere to go. Stolen That's Kinetic no Field as well. Well, this is just Lelis schooling them one skill after the other, allowing his cores to finish off the kills, controlling all Dogchamp's cores and onto the high ground push because they just killed them in front of their base.
Yeah, he stole Static Storm last fight too. He's got so many good spells this game, oh, and another this okay Thunderstrike. Okay, let's let, not such you know. a good one. <laughs> he already saved that last fight technically, so uh, let's not be too hard on him. He's been doing a great job so <laughs> far, and getting that tier three tower flea, gonna get the toss onto Gunner. He is behind enemy lines oh, right no. now. Tier 4 Tower is doing a decent amount of damage, but he's also regenerating pretty well. And Husky being there as well. They will lose Flea. Bloody Nine has to buy back as well. Yeah, Flea's like, I got him, boys. Toss them back in the Tier 4s <laughs> into the Disruptor. Gunner's like, eh, I don't really care about these. I'm Leshrac. I've got a Bloodstone. I'm just going to kill Bloody Nine real quick and walk my way out of there. Yeah, it's like, hey, guys, I found one. And then the <laughs> others are just yelling, what about the others? <laughs> yeah. See them running straight towards you. Truly is a gunner Vermintide. All right, RCY does have the Blink Dagger, but they, they're going after him. If they can start with anything that break this dagger, he could be in trouble yeah. here. All right, so... All right, Russell goes down I was again. just about to say that we're given a 15% chance win probability. What's the what's the win condition here on the side of Dog Champ? But Russell just got killed as well. I mean, that's your man. He's your win condition. Obviously, things are rough for him right now. But he does need to finish this BKB. This BKB is so important for him. He cannot play the game without it. But I do think you can still win this game if you're a dog champ. It does have to be on the back of a lot of fights where you do have BKB available on the void. You get the chrono off. You somehow stop the relocate. And I think that's pretty much like all you're really looking for. And Gunner is that hero you want to burst. He did not go BKB this game. So he is definitely killable. Yeah. There's another fight happening at the same time as we see Russell uh, getting killed on the replay. Dogchamp just loses yeah. quick, quickly two members while the face is void was still respawning. He's got his chrono, but that's going to be three. It's going to be sunlight targeted as well. Moo jumps a bit too early there, but it doesn't matter. They've got the numbers. There's no buybacks here either. So the damage that's going to happen to their base with this Monkey King, with the Desolator, is going to be quite severe. They're going to lose at least one Game's side. Hard. I guess they only can take mid. You still have the tier two yeah. top, and you have a tier one bottom, actually, still for Dog Champ that has still not been brought down. And I don't think you can go for the throne, but you can you can chip at it. You can do a little bit of damage there. Just get mass hammers and push. <laughs> yeah, I mean, at this point, it probably would work. <laughs> it probably would. <laughs> They are ahead 17,000 gold, which is quite a lot. Gunner going into a Hex now. I really do think they still have to make that same type of play now. Just all in Gunner. Because if you don't burst the Slushrack, he's going to kill everyone. Without a doubt. You can't even worry about Yamson right now. He's incredibly powerful as well on this Monkey King. Does have the Mage Slayer, which is going to like reduce the damage from this Evoker and Visage by quite a lot. But it is what it is at this point. You don't have many Pretty options. Much. And that, uh, talking about bursting down a hero, he's got 2,500 HP. So that's, and also the Bloodstone. So he's got a, <laughs> got a lot of regen. All right, Bloodstone will be down here. He's 1v5. We got a glimpse. He's literally 1v5 here. See what he can do. They're trying to poke Gunner, but <laughs> just right. to no avail. Another attempt on initiation, tossing him back in. This guy's just not dying. This, he's this, one this, five. This, this is ridiculous. This guy's just manhandling this entire fight all by himself, and he's not even dying. But they are taking kills. However, the oh, chrono, chrono is on the other side of the tree line. He won't be able to get anything done here. And yeah. the GG call, it comes out. There's just no hope at all on the side of Doc Champ. And Nouns, they take a clean 2-0 sweep. Yeah, I mean, if you're trying to one versus five a Leshrac and you're not successful, then yeah, there isn't much hope left. It's 